I am loving learning so much today. Uh, that's why I love coming to MRMW. And one of the things I've always wanted to do was have my own TV show. And many years ago, I was actually offered one uh, by a major uh, TV channel. And that same week, the president of the uh, channel who offered it to me was ousted in a power struggle. So that was the, so that, that was the end of my career and his at the same time. Uh, but there's one thing I would have loved to have done would have been a top 10 uh, list uh, like David Letterman does. But to stay on focus with this conference, uh, we got somebody smarter and better looking to talk about beyond the top 10. I give you Roddy Knowles. Thanks. Um, so what I want to do today is, is talk about mobile behavioral data. And one of the things I was thinking about yesterday as I was, I was sitting here, as I was remembering the same, the same conference last year, and I believe there are only two of us, maybe I'm forgetting someone, that were on stage talking about mobile behavioral data, but I kept hearing mobile behavioral this, this year coming up as a theme. And I haven't counted the number of our presentations that have you know, really grappled with behavioral, but they've certainly increased in number, and obviously happy to, happy to hear that. And when I think about mobile behavioral data, I think about it as being part of the researcher's toolkit. And notice I didn't say part of the data scientist toolkit here. I'm not a data scientist. I'm a social scientist. Nothing against data, science, data scientists at all. But I think that mobile behavioral data has a place in the toolkit. It's not going to answer all of our questions, and it shouldn't answer all of our questions. Uh, but I think it certainly has a place. So what I want to do today is, is walk through some of the ways that we can really start to grapple with mobile behavioral data, how we can, how we can dig deeper, go beyond, uh, go beyond the top 10 without needing necessarily to be a, a data scientist. And so when I'm thinking about this mobile behavioral data today and what I'm talking about, first of all, you know, I'm talking about smartphone data only. Uh, I'm also, I'm only interested in application data and web data today. There are a number of metrics that are collected off of people's mobile, mobile devices um, that, you know, have, the, have their own, own utility, but I really wanted to focus in on just application and, and web usage today. Uh, and, and so when we think about, you know, we look at uh, data, you know, a lot of times when it's aggregated and it's reported, what do we see? We see a top, you know, a top 10 list of, of sites, that, sites that are used, and, you know, surprise, everyone, everyone uses Google. Uh, we, you know, we see apps, you know, apps that are, that are used. So when I look out, you know, at the, I can look at this list and I look out in the audience and I see all of you that are picking up your phones while I'm, while I'm talking. What are you actually doing? Well, I know you're probably not checking your work email, you're checking Facebook, or, you know, people are still playing Candy Crush too. So hopefully none of you actually do that when, it, when, it, when I'm talking talking today. Um, and you know, I, I think that you know, app and web data, sort of parse them into a top 10, that's useful, but I think we need to go beyond that. And before I really get into the other arguments the, that I want to make today, you know, the, the first one, which I think is a, is a quite basic one, is that when we're thinking about app, app and web data, to look at things in parallel really adds a, a layer that isn't often done. It's really quite, e quite easy to do. So I just, I selected a, a few apps that, were, uh, apps that also have associated websites here that I, I thought were of interest. Uh, and I looked at, at, at applications only usage, which is on the left, you know, web only usage on the right, and then the overlap in the middle. And that overlap, I think, you know, it's really interesting to me as a researcher and, and you know, to, uh, to a lot of uh, marketers as well. Um, you know, why are people using, you know, an application only or the web only? Like looking at Walmart, for example, and I've seen a little bit of an uptick with, with Walmart in the last few months. Uh, but you know, people are still going to the website to, you know, to do business with Walmart rather than to use, use the application. But when people are using both, why are, why are they using both? Are they going to the app to do certain things? Are they going to the site to, to do other things? So I think sort of understanding what's in, what's in the middle here uh, is certainly an important and there's certainly an, an opportunity there for us as we start to look into mobile behavioral data. But the, really, the meat of what I want to get into today is how do we, how do we parse the data? And again, in, in a way that is relatively easy, I put air quotes ar around easy because it does take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but you don't have to be a, a, a data scientist to, to really, really dig in here. You know, the most basic thing is to look at demographics. I'm not going to spend any time you know, talking about demographics here. I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, I am going to talk about why operating system is important to consider. Uh, also, engagement scoring, knowing how engaged users actually are, how active they are, uh, and then also also um, give an example of the segmentation that we did based on profiling data that allows us to, to, to parse the data and make more sense out of it. 
Uh, and so the question that I want to ask, which is a very easy question for me to answer, is does the operating system matter? And the quick answer is yes. Uh, on the most basic level, if we, if we, look, at, uh, if we look at phone ownership, uh, in, this is in the, in the US, you know, of Android and, and, and iPhone specifically focus on, on those two operating systems. We see certain skews. You know, Android is, 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 skewing, is skewing younger. Uh, you know, I, iPhone is skewing, uh, skewing more female, also a little, a little bit more affluent. I think these things are fairly self-explanatory. But we wanted to dig in a little bit more and see, you know, are the users actually different? You know, based, you know, beyond demographics, you know, what do they have to say about themselves? And then how, you know, how does this actually bear out in the behavioral data that, that we're collecting? Uh, and so we, we asked our panelists you know, what, you know, different attitudinal and, and behavioral questions, and we found some interesting things. You know, we found that iOS users, you know, they tend to be a bit more gregarious, at least they say that they are. Uh, they you know, admire people with things you might call them a little bit you know, more materialistic, perhaps. They're in, into trying new things, tend to be early adopters, more interested in, in, in new products. They also tend to be more attached to, uh, attached to their phone uh, and use their phone uh, more. They say they do more than Android users for researching products and, and for shopping and, and those sort of associated act activities. Now, if we look at Android users, uh, they, they say they're, you know, they're more likely to be sort of less uh, you know, or live a, live a simple life and be you know, less, atta less attached to things, not caring about brand names and, and things like that. Uh, also, you know, use their, their devices in, in different ways. They, they claim to use it more, uh, watching, you know, watching TV, talking on the phone, using navigation, some things like that. Uh, but the ultimate argument here, I think, is a simple one, is that these, these differences do matter. It goes beyond demographics that iOS users and Android users are different. So we're thinking about behavioral data. We want to consider the, operate, we want to consider the operating system and not loop mobile in together and not you know, even just loop smartphone in together. We need to understand you know, operating system and the important differences here. And when we actually look at the behavioral data, these are just a few things that, that, that pop out. Uh, looking at Android, you're streaming audio, so using apps like Spotify and Pandora is more prevalent amongst, uh, amongst Android users. Also messaging, including third-party messaging apps like, like WhatsApp. Uh, also using, using deal apps. And then for, for iOS, so news usage and, and mobile banking, both across app and, and mobile web, uh, iOS users you know, over-index on, on those. But getting into the data a little bit more, you know, one of the questions that, that oftentimes comes up is, you know, how, are, how active are people when they're using their device and understanding engagement? And I think this is important. This is something that uh, can take a lot of time to delve into. We've got a data set of, of you know, million, millions of rows and digging into it and trying to understand, you know, how it, active people are with, with their device. Um, you know, a data scientist can dig into that, sure. Uh, but we have a way of, of delving into this and in what we're calling engagement scoring and really good I sort of have five factors or five ingredients that, that go, into, go into the concoction here. Uh, one being being app records. So we're looking at the number of, uh, of applications that are used or instances of usage of an application over, over a month period. Also the number of unique apps used, or how many, how many unique apps were used. Uh, and then the total time spent on applications across the same period. And then we're also looking at URLs or websites visited. So how many, how many records or how many unique sites did they go to during this period, uh, in, in addition to the total, uh, total, sites, the total sites visited. And then we look at the data, and we parse people into, in, into six buckets. And so we append the, typically append this information to a data set, so I might get a massive data set, but I can quickly see that someone is, is lumped into one of these six groups, going from very high uh, to, to very low, and I can see how engaged they are with, with their device. And that immediately gives me you know, a pretty quick read and allows me to, to parse the data in ways I can start to see certain, certain trends and certain things pop up, for people who are more engaged with their device or less engaged. Now, another thing that I wanted to do and just take a few, uh, a few minutes to walk through is uh, segmentation that we ran with, with uh, profiling attributes. These are exist existing profiling attributes on, on our panelists. This goes counter to my nature. I'm a social scientist. I want to ask people questions, and I want to survey them, and I, want to, I typically combine survey data with behavioral data because I think there's a lot of value there. But I try to do something that, again, runs counter to what I want to do, and just use existing data. What can I do without having to run, run a survey, without having to do anything additional to profile people, just using existing information that we have on panelists, on their, their hobbies, their, their interests, uh, other, other attitudinal and, be, and behavioral profiling elements. Uh, and so we, we took all this uh, and we ran a segmentation uh, and came up with, with five, five different groups. And I'll just spend a couple of minutes uh, walking, walking through these and giving some examples. Um, so the first group that, that we found were what we call money minders. 
uh, and they're really focused on focused on finance, focused on on, on banking uh, and investing. Uh, excuse excuse mail a little bit uh, more more affluent, but they're really not that engaged. And I think looking at that engagement scoring uh, in combination with the segmentation really revealed something powerful for us because they're using the, their uh, their mobile device, but in a very selective way. And I'll go into a little bit more detail a, a, about this. But they're not you know highly engaged with the with the device. Uh, also, the culture club here, these are not people who are in the Boy George fan club, uh, but they, these are people who are, are interested in, uh, in entertainment uh, and food and, and fashion, and they do tend to be highly engaged with, uh, with, with their device. Uh, there's the enthusiast. Have sort of a broad range of, of, of hobbies, hobbies and interests, and you know they they sort of, they don't necessarily over-index on you know only a couple of things, but they really you know are interested in a lot of things across the board and tend to be moderately engaged with their devices. Uh, also, the home bodies, people who um, are interested in things like home improvement and a lot of home-based activities, uh, tend to be highly engaged with their devices. Heavy heavy users across a, a number of uh, different types of applications and sites, and they sort of stood in contrast to this last group, which I'm calling out and about, the people who are, are more interested in, in traveling, uh, entertainment, concerts, and, and things like that, uh, who are, tend to be moderately engaged with uh, with their devices. And so we took this, uh, we took these segment profiles, and then we actually we just dug into the data. I mean, it was actually you know pretty simple. I had this, I had these segments. I parsed the data by by these segments, and then you know what what could I find without you know honestly you know doing too much to actually dig into the data beyond the segmentation. And some of the, some of these things immediately immediately popped out. As the money miners, the group that I that I mentioned first, are heavy user heavier users of email. Uh, also of sports sites, of, of apps, uh, certain apps like LinkedIn, they, they over-indexed on. And this really fits with the profile that, the, that we saw uh, of them as, as being really focused on, uh, focused on certain things, but not heavy users. Uh, they're lighter users of, of social and, and deal applications. The Culture Club, they were heavy, heavier users of, of social sites, and I think this you know, sort of fits nicely with a profile that we, uh, that we, created, we created for them, and it sort of, it sort of made sense. Uh, using using Facebook, um, Instagram, BuzzFeed uh, a bit more more heavily than others, but we did find that there were only average users of retail sites. So there we get heavy, heavier social users interested in things like fashion and, and entertainment and food, but not necessarily heavier shoppers at least on at least on their mobile device or on their smartphone. Uh, and then the out and out and about crew. They're, they're heavier users of, of, of Facebook, uh, certain entertainment sites like like Netflix and, and Hulu as well, uh, and, and ultimately you know average shopping users too. You know of all the segments that we looked at, there weren't one well, there wasn't one group that really popped when it came to shopping. Although they were notably uh, heavier users of uh, of eBay. And so, you know, I've walked through some of these uh, sort of quick examples of ways that I think we can dig beyond uh, the top 10, uh, but I do want to sort of leave you with a, you know, a top 10 sort of list of tips uh, of ways to go beyond, uh, beyond when we're thinking about mobile behavioral data and important things to consider. You know, for those of you in the room who are, who are researchers like me, but not necessarily data scientists, and some of you may be daunted by mobile behavioral data, we start thinking about all the types of data that are collected and the millions of rows of, of data that are, you know, can, can come across to you, well, how do, how do we go about making sense of it? Well, I think the most important thing to do is, is to really start and know what's collected. Know all the different data points that are collected and, and know what's important to you. Are you interested in, in web data, application data? Or do you really need to know about, or, or do you care about the battery data that's collected on someone's phone? Um, perhaps you are, perhaps you aren't. It's something that some people inter are interested in, depending on who you are, but you know, perhaps not. And you, know, you don't want to get caught in sort of data uh, overload, you know, having too much data to actually weed through. So again, know, know what's important before you start to, start to embark. Also, I think it's critical to understand the makeup of the, of the sample and makeup of the panel. You know, is, the panel, is it representative? Uh, and is it representative for the group that I'm, in, that I'm, I'm focused on? So my, my consumers or whoever, uh, whoever fits my demographic profile, uh, is, is, is it representative to make sure that you're, you're dealing with the, with the right group of people, certainly. Uh, also define what you want to find. Uh, know what your objectives are. One of the things, one of the sort of risks with behavioral data is you get all this data and then you're trying to figure out, well, what do I actually want to do with it? I think it's important to ask these questions early on in, in the process and, and understand again and clearly define what it is you're after. But then 
dig a little bit deeper. I, I think that once you define what, what you define what you're after, you want to understand what can we do to sort of add a, add a layer to that. If I'm really interested in, in you know, users of certain types of, of applications, well, do I also want to look at their web data and what are those web users doing? And again, understand you know, what the, that overlap might be. So what, what steps can I take to, what steps can I take to dig deeper uh, than I initially thought that I, that I was going to need to? Also, uh, again, to acknowledge operating system as a consideration. Understand that all mobile users and all smartphone users are not the same, that there are important differences in these users, you know, attitudinally and behaviorally, and also in how they use their devices. And I think these, these, go, these go hand in hand, and that's an important consideration before embarking uh, on, on your journey into mobile behavioral data. Uh, and look at app, app and web data in parallel. As I mentioned, I think that there's, there's an opportunity there, and this is a very simple way to begin to dig into this data and understand some of the, some of the richness there by having sort of a full gamut of behavioral data and not just, not just one metric. To understand levels of engagement, to understand the differences between heavy users and light users and, and what that means, what that means for users that you're, that you're targeting of, of your brand or people that you are, you are trying to, to market to, not just what are they doing on my app or competitive apps in the, in the same category or, or websites, but how are they using their devices more broadly and where do they fall into this, this usage spectrum. And then also to, to think creatively and think of ways to, to, to parse the data. I gave a quick example of, of a segmentation that, again, uh, was only based on profiling variables, but you know, use, utilizing sur survey data to, to segment users and to better, better understand them, I think, is, I, think, I think is critical. And that leads into my, my last point, which is you know, integrating with other, other types of research. I think that's really, I think that's really critical. Uh, I, I think that mobile behavioral data can stand alone, and there's a lot, there's a lot of power there. But it really, you know, as we as we dig into mobile behavioral data, you know, what I found with a, with a lot of studies is that uh, it's a great place to start. Uh, when, when we dig into the data, we find that oftentimes it, it, uh, you know, it beckons a lot more questions. You know, we ask questions of the data, and we start to look into it, and it raises more questions. And I think if it's, if, you know, if it's doing that, uh, then we're probably doing, you know, we're probably doing the, the, the right thing. If it's, if it's beckoning us to ask more questions and really dig into what the why uh, behind you know, the what that we're finding in the mobile behavioral data is, then I think we're certainly, uh, we're certainly on the right track. Uh, and so on that note, uh, I, I will open it up for any other questions. Questions from the audience? Does everybody agree with the top 10 list? I guess they do. All right. Round of applause for our friend.